Hello and welcome, I'm Mystical, this is Mystical Game and we're back in the Watcher of Realms and this is the easiest method I can find to do stage 21 AMR. So we're using Wrath, we're using him over on the far right hand side because where well, he fits in there absolutely beautifully, he takes care of himself, does all that self healing, that's nice. Using the pair, I'm using Volker and I'm using Brokenir, they're going on that left hand side there to take care of those mobs coming down the top, I mean they work very well together as a pair there. Uh, healer wise we've gone for Vortex, why wouldn't we, fits into that whole northerner thing going on and does the healing quite sufficiently so that's absolutely fine there now we're using Avaline as well Avaline absolutely brilliant you need to get to promotion too but that is about it and then other than that you need to put on the artifact for the extra block one so she's got a block of three promotion two gives her another block so that's four put the artifact on her that's a block of five that she's got so Bear that in mind, absolutely brilliant champ. And then we've got Baron and I'm using Decimus because I need a couple of um, unyielding champions and they're going to work ideally for me there. And then after that, we've got Volker because it's just easier to have her. Why wouldn't you? She works very well in this sort of setup when you're relying on turning heroes round and that sort of thing. So, And then we've got our Northerner pair and we're going to those, they work absolutely fantastically as a pair. As you can see, we're well below what we actually require for this run. So, so firstly, let's get me out of the way. And now we're gonna place Corridor down and we're gonna place Isil down. She's, they're both down there. They've both got the artifact on that gives them a plus one block. So they've got block of three. And then we put the artifact on and that takes them up to a block of four. Put Volker down as fast as we can. We want her down as quickly as possible because of this passive. Now this passive is giving her extra damage as time goes on. Now the soon you get her down the sooner this passive starts ticking away for us so we get her down as soon as we possibly can then after that we're just waiting on building up some coins once we've got enough coin costs and we're going to place down a tank down in front of her so we've got her protected and she's going to be shooting over the top of the tank so that will take care of everything coming on that sort of section for us at top left now we've got the mobs coming down and we're just waiting for enough time to put a healer up now this is the important thing is something has happened hasn't been in the patch notes of the game now this is the buffies i put on him north guard it's a passive in gear raid and artifact raid during the ultimate increases the block of all northern defenders by one so that's what we're relying on and there's his ultimate there and then increases block by two and defense by 100 percent this lasts for 20 seconds but that's only him so we just need to get make sure we're getting that up to a five so normally he's got a block of three he's going to put the um the passive on which will give all of them an extra one and then he's got the artifact which give him uh five while his um ultimate's on it will actually have another two as well but we don't have to worry about that so there we go healer's gone down now we have to wait for everyone to come over when everyone's come over we can then trigger off his ultimate so we're just waiting for him to pile up and at the last possible moment we trigger off his ultimate there we go we can see the plus one block has gone on everyone so that's taking everyone's block up to to five or at least the the two down there now they why do they pair so well together now they pair so well together because as his ultimate runs out we can then trigger her ultimate now her ultimate puts a block increase of plus one on everyone around her so we trigger off hers we've got that extra block buff on everyone so we're now back up to five and that keeps those mobs at bay for us long enough for unholy requiem and Holy Wreck Room comes down and slams down. Now, we see that we've got them staggered, and there's an important reason for that. We need that square free, because Unholy Wreck Room comes down, we can then recall one of the champions, we'll take a bit of extra coin, because why wouldn't you? We can get Decimus in behind. So when they hit Decimus, the ones that haven't exploded now explode. Decimus has the unyielding, so it's not an issue. But if you let them get into that square where he is and explode there, they will take out Valk or what other, other healer you're using up there. So that's essential that they don't get onto that square. Now we've got Aveline up there now where Decimus was. She's got the block of four. She's got the artifact, takes her up to five. Baron's just got his normal stuff on. I think he's got a block of three. And then we've got Valk up behind her. She'll be able to block off the other two. So that's that lane, both lanes taken care of this time round. Now, we haven't got, well, I haven't put Wrath down yet. You can put him down any time now, but I'm just waiting. Just holding off for a little bit. Now the boss will do three hits. 
that's his sort of AOE attack that he does while everyone's just on the map. So he can just keep tickling your, your health down a little bit. So there's his three hits. Now I place Wrath down. It's just, I don't think I probably need to. I could have placed him down earlier. But it's, it's just there. If you need it, you can actually place him down later. Here comes the boss's Holy Requiem. And then that would be all the mobs dead. Now remember, Baron will live because he's got his unyielding state. Now with, with Baron surviving, they'll walk into him and blow up. Now as quick as you can, you get Corridor down. You want him down as soon as you possibly can to start building up that rage because you need to trigger his ultimate. We'll get rid of Baron, we'll get rid of Volker. Then we're going to place her down again. Now we've got our pair of Northerner, Northerners down there. And they're going to take care of the tanking for us. Now we can see he's just over 50% rage. But, and we need that to get up to the 100%. So we have geared in with a bit of rage regen. Just to make sure that we can get over there. Get across the line. Now as we can see we don't need to match. We've got three. There's the fourth mob. The fifth mob is just coming along. And then we can trigger his ultimate. There we go, everyone's now got plus one block on and his ultimate is now ticking away. When his ultimate gets to the end again, we will redo, redo his ultimate and we will then get our plus one block from our Northerner Lord. She will put that on everyone. So here's the end of his ultimate and now we get ready to cast hers. There's hers gone off and everyone's got plus one block on again and we've got the space behind them again where we can put Decimus in a minute. So here comes Unholy Requiem. I haven't, I've got that much coin I haven't got to worry about actually recalling anyone. I can just let them die without any issue whatsoever. And then I can place Decimus down to take the hit. Tank the hit. Uh, the unyielding goes off. There's someone else. It's Decimus and dies. Right, so that's everything done. That's all the ads taken care of. We now need to take care of the boss. Now we've got enough time. Our Baron's ready to go so we can put our Baron down. And we put our Baron down at the extremities of our healer. So we see where our healing range is. And at the extremities of our healing range, that's where we put our tank. Now, up at the top, uh, on the left-hand side, We've got Valk taking care of everyone. When those mobs are dead, that's the end of it. There aren't any more. And on the right-hand side, we've got the same going on with Wrath. They will eventually stop. Now, the boss does a devastating strike. He hits everyone within about two tiles. So he's got sort of this big AoE hit. So you don't want him to get too close because he will start devastating your, your healer and your Valk and that sort of thing. So we just wait until we've got rid of rid of that last mob here's a devastating strike coming down boom 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 there we are he does three nice big hits we've got a healer we've got baron there who's got unyielding he's got a nice big shield so absolutely perfect tank to take care of some stuff for us so we can recall our, we can recall our valk and we can recall our abrogni and get rid of them now if we recall our baron don't do this don't do this we can get the boss to come further down. Now, if we see what his devastating strike does when it's further down, see, look at that, he's taking everyone out, takes the healer out. So now we just have to start moving our tanks about. We, we've got plenty of tanks available and people to get in the way of him. So while we're waiting for everything else to come online, like a proper tank and a healer and, and our actual DPS, we're just gonna fire up some tanks. <laughs> but you, you should not do this. That's just for an example for the video. We can recall Wrath because that's everyone taking care of at the top. That's just an example for the video over what you shouldn't do and why you need to tank in at the extremity of your healer. He will eventually get bored of doing devastating strikes. There we go, there's Decimus. He won't kill Decimus because Decimus has got an unyielding state, so that gives us a bit more breathing space as well. And now we've only got a few more seconds before actual healers come online. So there's a proper tank. Here's a devastating strike. And we ice block up from that. That's as expected. Now we've got Valk down there, but unfortunately what's happened is the boss has moved one square away. <clears throat> so Valk can't hit them. And <laughs> then I put Volker in the wrong place anyway. So it all, all turns into a bit of a disaster for me. So there's his devastating strike again. Valk's there. She can res him. That's not an issue. And then shortly we can just put our healer down and then we can start EPSing the boss down slowly. <laughs> There we go. Eventually the boss does get bored of doing devastating strikes. So by now he's finished doing them all and you can just place your DPS down wherever you like without too much of an issue. But bear in mind, don't do that. Tank him away 
so it doesn't wreak havoc on you when you get in close to that so because everything within two tiles and it's a big big hit that he's doing so make sure you tank him somewhere nice and safe where he's not going to actually affect everyone he'll probably one shot your heat or your um your fighters when he's doing it but there's plenty of time or you can just wait till he's blown himself out and finished doing all his rage and then you can put your fighters down i would generally just put them down as they come come off on cooldown put them down there and they will slowly chip away at him and it's not too much of an issue but do bear it in mind <laughs> Now, if you tank him down there, your platform based, which is probably your healer, is going to take the hit as well. So either make your, your healer very tanky so they can take that sort of hit or just tank him somewhere else where that hit isn't going to affect you. And that's about it. There's a boss going down nice and steady. And then when I've got your power of dominance on, I will then redo it on a system that's a little easier. It doesn't take this long to actually do because this is not... <laughs> This is the effect for the video, not for how you should actually do the run. So I'll redo it later when I've got pod on. So there we go. That's it. First time through. Should click first time rewards. There it is. All three done. We've leveled up from level, level 11 to 11 and 12. First time rewards down there as well. So that's it. All done. Thank you very much. And that is the easiest way I can find to do it. Now let's move me somewhere so I'm not in the way again. Let's look at some gear. So there's Valk. There's her gear. Now I've got her probably in the best gear I've got. And the reason for that is because she's got to be up there and she's got to do enough damage. So whoever you've got up there doing your damage has to be geared enough to actually do enough damage to take on the mobs. So tank wise, here's my tank. I used a broken it. Um, he's HP placed all over the place. So he's got HP set on. Um, he hasn't got an artifact on, didn't really need one. His skills are done up to dust level. And that's about it for the tank, really. That's all I used him for. Like you say, his skills aren't all done. I've only recently pulled him and I, I haven't had a massive need for him at the moment. So this is, this is the buff that's um, made all this possible. Northguard, so in gear raid and artifact raid during the ultimate increases the block of all Northern and Defender allies on the field by one. And that's the bit that's made all this possible. The other thing is when we have a look at his ultimate here, now you want two points into his ultimate. Whether that's through skill crystals or if you're lucky dust, then that's absolutely fine. Now, that gives a duration of an extra five seconds so you could go you'll go from 15 you'll go up to 20 seconds which is ideal you may not need it but it is definitely worth having if you can because it makes it a lot easier for you otherwise it's very tight on the timings you'd have less time than i had now i didn't have all the timings available We've used up uh, the artifact, so give him plus one block. It does some other stuff as well, but we're, we're mostly interested in the plus one block because that takes him up from where he was to where he where he can block the five. Now, gear-wise, I've got him in the Mana Spring set for that Rage Regen. It gives him an auto Rage Regen of plus three, so that's all the time. So when he's not doing anything, he's still got plus three auto Rage Regen going up, taking him from 14 to the 17. And then what I've dealt with the gear, as I've made sure it's got HP percent on. If I haven't got HP percent, I've gone for defense percent. And then as a substat, it's got Rage Regen. <laughs> and that's all I've gone for, just to make sure that he gets around to that ultimate fast enough to actually do this. That's it. And then he has the artifact on for the plus one block and he can do his ultimate. Here's the other person with the ultimate. She's got some sort of tanky stuff on. It's got HP set and then nothing on the left hand side. Her skills aren't all done either. So there is room for improvement here. Now you can see if you book her all the way up, she's got another three seconds available. So I did it with, I'll have 20 on him. I did it with 32 seconds. I think you can probably do it with 30. However, you're much better off if you've got 35 seconds. That would make your life a lot easier. But it can be done without it. So bear that in mind. Now, other than that, it's just they don't need to tank that much. Most of the damage comes from the boss doing the big, big hits or the mobs exploding. On the unholy requiem so they're the two places your damage comes from you don't need that much the gear isn't too intensive on this you can get away with very little gear but that's the piece you want is that plus one block that she puts out awakenings I haven't got awakened but we have got we've got a fully um made up one out of ten bottom of the heap artifact there 
so she can have the extra one block because remember she's got three block plus the artifact is four and then her skill on her ultimate gives out every one plus one so that takes everyone up to a five now absolutely fantastic champion Aveline so she's got the full artifact on level 25 fully maxed out and that gives up to um the plus one block on her Now the other thing you need to do is you need to make sure that she's probably higher than 12 out of 40 would help you need to make sure you've got promotion two done so promotion two gives you a plus one block and that plus one block takes a block from three to four on a permanent basis add in the artifact that takes up to five you can tank a lane all by herself but if you have a higher than level 12 out of 40 you're probably doing a lot better and you can make that a bit easier for yourself so she doesn't take that much damage just when the Holy Requiem comes on, but we're expecting her to die then anyway, so it's no great shakes. You could make life a little bit easier for your healer if you put some proper gear on your tanks. Now, healer-wise, uh, as always, I've got my um, Vortex done up with HP, speed, and then HP. That's what I go for every time I build them. Can't go wrong with it. <laughs> It's how I like my single target healers to be done. All the awakenings are done, and he's got a stage um, 10 done, euphoric orb. Now, plenty of room for improvement there. I'm sure you can come up with better healers. Again, hollow might be a bet there, depending on how you're feeling, just so you can actually um, get that rage going again. So there's an option for you as well. Now, Wrath, we've got him actually fairly well geared out. We've got his crit rate done, crit damage, got a bit of speed on himself. The artifact's important for him. I'm not only relying on his heavy blow for his ultimate, and then when you get him awakened five, that ultimate, when he does heavy blow, heals him for 30% of the damage done. So that's where his healing's coming from. Some of it's coming from here as well. So bear that in mind. I put this artifact on him, not for the increase of block for a change, but because it heals him. And also you've got a Volker on the team as well, so that's given out a heal for people as well. So plenty of healing going on for him, just so we can stay up there, taking on those mobs on the right hand side without any help from anyone else. As you can see at the bottom there, where it says Awaken 5, Heavy Blow is triggered, uh, Hero stores HP equal to 30% of the total damage dealt, so that's where he gets that from. We've got Baron done as well, so we, he hasn't got an artifact on. His skills are all done because we want his skills done because we want the unyielding from him. Now, the unyielding, make sure we've got that done because that gives him some life afterwards. It doesn't need to be done up fully maxed out, but you do need to make sure you've got it so he's there afterwards. Other than that, HP percent, and we're good to go with our, with our tank. Now, here's Decimus. Now, as you can see, we've got him fully geared out, absolutely maxed out. So we've got the one piece on him. Uh, we've got him level 40 out of 40. We do have all his skills done. Again, he's got that unyielding and it's that break in the unyielding, which is nice. So he survives the initial blast on the boss. And then when the other mobs run into him, they self blow up again. So that's why we've got him there. And we've got a good artifact on him as well. So if you've got a better artifact than that, good luck to you. You should be able to smash through it. Right, so that's about it done. Right, so that's about it done. That's as easy as I can get it to um, get down for Artifact Material Ray 21. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, if you could, just leave us a little thumbs up, like and subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you in a video again soon. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Goodbye.